welcome to another Magical Egypt Live. This is going to be fabulous. Today we have Isaac Rodriguez, who is a true sidereal astrologer. Welcome, my love. Hey, sweetie. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you here. I've got a preview. I know what's yeah. coming. It's going to be fabulous. So, yeah. sweetie, for mm-hmm. people who don't know, why don't mm-hmm. you tell us what sidereal is? Okay, great. So sidereal astrology is the root word is sidereal. Sidereal means star time. It's the time, the motions of the stars, keeping track with the stars. Um, so, so that's the difference is tropical astrology is keeping track of the seasons and then assigning astrological names to the 30, 30 day periods of the seasons. Right. So that's why. So what okay, so it's more is, it's more of a macro look at things. Ta- uh, yeah, it's yeah. A, it's a, yeah, it's a stack, right? So so two thousand years ago, both of the zodiacs were the same. So pretty much the beginning of our age, of the age of Pisces, the two zodiacs were the same. But we all know what happened to astrologers and mystics at the beginning of our times is that we were all crucified, and so we weren't really allowed to practice astrology, right? Because it's that powerful. So this is what we're talking about. So when they gave us back astrology, they gave us back astrology with a broken mechanism. So it's like the, like the, the mechanism is called the great year. It's, 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 it's the 25,920 year cycle, the precessional cycle. So we're tracking for the past 2000 years, we're moving back one degree every 72 years. Sidereal astrology is tracking that movement. So we're with the stars the whole time. But tropical astrology hasn't accounted for that shift. So they still say March 21st is Aries. So, and you know, we know since we're all involved with magical Egypt, we know that whatever is rising on the spring equinox, that's how we tell time in the great year. So what's rising now, March 21st, is Pisces. We're in the age of Pisces. I was just going to say, so it's not the age of Aquarius? No, we're at the end of Pisces. (laughs) Yeah, we're at the end. We're like six degrees towards the end. So we're literally right now dawning on the age of Aquarius. We are. It it actually is the dawning. Dawning. Yeah, we're coming, we're merging, which is why we're having this kind of shifting energy right now. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that's that's happening now. Like, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're six degrees, so six times 72, you do the math, I think it's, we're like almost 400 years out. But in the scale of 25,000 years, that's now. Right. We're in it right now. We're right. in the dawning of the age, which is why all the symbolism of the religions are with the fish. All, all of our creation stories are, we come from water, we're the fish, Jesus Christ. His symbolism is the fish, right? And he's really the Christos, right? Which is in ancient Egypt is the Christos, the anointed one. That's where you get Christ from, right? So, so all of that relates back to you again, you know, like, like the That's origins amazing. Of, of, of celestial movements. <laughs> so one of the things that we wanted to do to demonstrate this is pick somebody in the audience and find out what you really are. So who yeah. is somebody who is no, who doesn't really know sidereal and mm-hmm. who thinks like me that there's Scorpio and wants to find out the truth. So if somebody put up your hands. Can you see the hands, darling? Oh, there we yeah, go. All I, right. I can see some birth date. So I need a birth date, a time, and a location. So birth date, time, and location, I'll put it in. All but right. But while, while you're doing the, the screen, and I'm going to do the demo of um, the sky. Okay. I'll, you want to do that first? Yeah, I'll do All that, right. and then we'll pick. we'll pick. So... Whoever wants to submit in the chat, just put birth time, date, and location, and now uh, we're going to show you your chart. So basically, here's what I want to show you before we do chart, so you can understand what we're looking at. So, and in 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 the depth of this conversation, this is really what we're looking at. You know, we have the great conjunction going on, but but this is what I'm seeing big time is. Uranus in the real time sky, and you can all look it up for yourself. You can get any. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold. You're, you're too complicated for me, sweetie. Okay. So first <laughs> of all, so what you're showing me is this is what the stars look like yep. right now in the sky. Yep. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So, okay. So if I was a normal astrologer, what would I yep. be seeing, and what what are you seeing as a? Okay. Okay. Yeah, it is a good question. So, what I'm seeing now, and what you see with a telescope, right? So if you have a telescope right now. You'll look in the constellation. You see here where my highlighting is? The constellation in the sky of, of Aries, right? And here's our zodiac belt that we have for sidereal astrology. 
we have the sign of Aries. So we match Aries. We're mirror, we have a mirror, a mirror match. Our chart literally matches, it mirrors the sky, which is the whole point of astrology, right? We 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 all assume astrology is, oh, this is our sun was in this sign when we were born. Exactly. That's the assumption. But if you're following tropical astrology, that's hundred percent wrong. And that's and 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 you can look at you, any 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 app, any star app, anything on your phone. You can look and go and put it in the sky, and you'll see that it's going to show you the true sky, and it's not going to be what tropical says, right? So here's here's how we show the match. So well, here can you I have ask this... you one last question though? Hold on. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Let's say they're saying, "Ooh, it's Moon in Scorpio," right? And it's, we look uh, up in the sky, and it's actually Moon in Sagittarius in yeah. reality. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking Moon in Scorpio is going to mean I'm getting a bit horny. I'm going to mm -hmm. deal with deep yeah. thoughts, right? Moon in Sagittarius means I'm going to go on a holiday and be philosophical, right? Mm -hmm. So do the energies actually change? Are we like just totally wrong when we're looking up and we're saying it's Moon in Scorpio and we're expecting one thing, but we're really getting something else, yeah? Yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, and that's that's the whole, you know, that's the whole sort of somewhat Problem. conspiracy of it, of like... Let's give them back this mechanism because you, if you look, if you look at the Hermetica, you know, it's it's quoted. A tomb is saying, "I'm going to create a zodiac, and that's going to be a mechanism to control the humans on Earth, so we're going to control their faith through this zodiac." And then they give us the zodiac to work with the zodiac, and it's off. So we're reading it, we're reading it off, so that we don't really tune in. To what they call the firmament right the eighth sphere of the stars because the seventh sphere is saturn saturn is the planet of control and structure limitations and death right so they're keeping us on the seventh sphere and when you do sidereal astrology you're doing the a, a breakthrough to the eighth sphere which is that akashic realm akashic is akash akashic records sidereal akashic they mean the same thing they mean the stars so so this is our true power is to connect and to live our lives and live sort of literally our own book of the dead, right? Because the book of the dead is how you live on earth so that you can finally get home, right? You do the, the hall of two truths, you go and you check in, they weigh your heart against the feather. <laughs> if you screwed up, you go back down. If you don't, you go with Osiris and Isis to the stars, you go to the Akash. So that's the issue that we're looking at. And I think on, a, on that level, that is intentional to keep us slightly off. And no one knows to look in the sky. No one knows, like they say, oh my God, full moon in Gemini, whatever. And I'm looking at it with my telescope because you know, I'm an astronomer. And I'm saying full moon is actually in Taurus conjunct Pleiades. That's amazing, powerful energy. But you're running around talking about Gemini, you know, be wild with your hand and stuff. I'm looking at Pleiades being like, let's connect with the cosmic brothers and sisters in Pleiades, right? So, so that's what happens is that we, we, we tune our energies to a wrong resonance and then we don't get the real message. It's like how yeah. the music is tuned to the wrong hurt. Wow, exactly. Dude. 432 right. is the universal frequency, but we, we tune our our music to 440. And you know, with the pyramids, right? The pyramids, I think it's a 143, 43, 200,000 scale of the pyramid maps earth. Yes, one, yes, yes. A scale of one to 40, 43,200 scale is the map of earth and that matches the pyramids. Wow. So the pyramids are saying, this is the universal frequency that you need to be on. This is what we're gonna transmit so that we all are uh, in the universal frequency. And then the ruling elites make us tune to 440, slightly off. So, <laughs> right. Oh. And we know through quantum entanglement, the stars do matter, right? I mean, if we want to follow quantum entanglement, string theory, everything's connected, everything has an effect simultaneously, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. So this is what we're kind of dealing with. So, yeah. <laughs> It's important stuff, honey. All right, we'll teach us so we know. This is so okay, let me just so show far. You the... <laughs> <laughs> so the, the quick demo, and this is what's important is, like I said, this is constellation of Aries in sidereal astrology. We're also saying this is the sign of Aries. 
and we're saying the sun, the planet that's here is, is Uranus. So Uranus is starting the zodiac cycle over again, 84 year cycle. Uranus is the planet of change and renewal. It breaks down, it, it changes the structure, it's radical renewal. So here's a quick example. If we were to change this, we're gonna change it right now to a tropical chart. And I'm gonna show you what happens. So keep your eye on the, on the wheel. And we're gonna see that it, it changes, right? So now Aries, the sign right here, changed to Taurus. Wow, right? wow. So Uranus, like tropical astrology is saying, if anybody looks up tropical astrology, astrodynes.com or whatever, you're gonna see a chart of today, it's gonna to say Uranus is in Taurus. So I'm showing you, they say Uranus is in Taurus, but in the background, the constellation is Aries. And that's what I show on a tropical chart is Aries, Aries. So this I, is how- I tell you what, I don't think you can get more different vibes from, than, from Taurus to, to Aries. Do you know what say different. Again? Like the vibes, the, the energies of Aries and the Aries oh my God. of Taurus are completely yeah. different. Yeah, Taurus is about stability, you know, finally breaking through the ground and then stability and then rooting and then moving. Aries is like, I'm gonna break through it. I'm not even thinking changes on the horizon i'm starting fresh brand new it rules the first house mars mars is persistent yep so yeah so this is what we're looking at this is the problem that we have so now if you look at this uranus and aries starting the zodiac cycle over again that was what the book i was talking about there's a mathematical historian the great transformation of 2021 and he 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 finds that that there's 180 there's a hundred and uh 68 year cycle of when everything changes again, the social structure changes everything. And, and, and he relates it to, this is, has to be cosmological, astrophysical influences that are changing. So then he even points to looking at Uranus. He's like, it's gotta be something with Uranus because Uranus is 84 years, 84 times two is 168. And that's the sine wave up and down. So we are on the verge of changing our, social system, uh, economic, political, social system, and during a great conjunction. So this is what we're looking at, right? So That's, this really is a very auspicious yeah. placing of the stars, right? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. And it happens yeah, this how is, often? A, a, well, how, say it again, the conjunction, the great yeah, conjunction. Yeah, how often does the great conjunction Every 20 around? years. Okay. Every 20 years, we have a great conjunction. Okay. So, yeah. So, yeah. And then, um, so I don't know, what do you want to move to next? You want to do a chart well, so or you want to so just like, let, let's say <laughs> just for now, 20 years uh -huh. ago was 2000. Yeah. Which was a, I mean, look, I guess dates are kind of arbitrary really. Right. Like, mm -hmm. you know, everybody has a different calendar, but this yeah. time, the last great conjunction, can you point to the big societal change that happened? Was that like the internet came online or like what happened in 2000 that, oh, that was- Wasn't that Y2K? Yeah, Y2K, yeah. That was Y2K, right? When it went from yeah. one ni 1999 to 2000, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Y2K, so that might've been something that was like technological, it you know, change, changes, right? Yeah. Which is like- I think maybe the internet, it might've been like the internet really. Like, I mean, I think the internet, has yeah. come on since then, big time. Yeah, yeah. I think I think from from what I read in this book, it's like something gets introduced, right, and then it's then it starts to move. So this is the technical age. This this is the age of technology. Okay. And so, what so, planet? What what sign was that conjunction in? Oh, I don't I don't remember, but I can I can pull up a chart. Yeah. I well, can, don't like, worry about. It. Let's let's get on. Let's get on. Well, I'll yeah, tell yeah, you, we yeah. want two choices now. We can. Yeah. Do you want to do Caitlin later? Because it's Caitlin's birthday. We're going to choose her because her birthday right, is eleven eleven. So you want to do her now? See oh, what yeah. She is? Yeah, yeah. Right. Let's do it right now. So actually, I'm not looking at the chat. You wanna you wanna give me? Yes, her sweetie. How do you it spell is, it? C okay. Caitlin, uh, like C A I T L Y N. And she's 11, 11, 88. Wow. How's that for a birthday, girl? That's crazy. Oh, wow. 11, 11. <laughs> wow. 11, 11, yeah. 88. And it's uh, Windsor, Ontario, Canada at 12.57 p.m. Okay, 12.57. Hang on. 12.57. And then uh, 
Hello, so it's, it's Windsor. Like, how do you spell? How do you spell? Mm. Win? Yep. Wow. W I N D S O R. Yeah. Ontario, Canada. I got yes. it. Okay, All right. So on November 11th, 1988, 1257, Windsor. Yes. All right. So, so let's look at the chart. Uh, I'm going to open it up so we can look at some aspects if we need to. Okay. Give me a sec. Um, so Caitlin, what do you think you are? Eleven, eleven. You would say you're a Scorpio, wouldn't you, darling? Yeah, all right. Yeah. yeah. She's a Libra. Libra. Yeah, Libra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Libra, and her son, her son, her moon though is actually right on the cusp between Scorpio and the Fucus, the thirteenth zodiac sign. Oh, <clears throat> let's so talk that's about that. Powerful. Tell me huh? about that before we go in. What's tell? How come there's okay. thirteen? Okay, yeah. Well, the ancients all use thirteen. So, I want to show you. I got. I do a slideshow all about that. But I'm just going to show you a few slides because we're going to just like just look at a few little slides. So we're coming 13, back to you, Caitlin, but we need to understand this first to understand it. So don't worry, sweetie. So the thirteenth. Okay, if we look at it, is a fucus. You look at a fucus is related to. Uh, uh, um, in, in Greek, in Greek um, cosmology is uh, um, uh, not, um, Asclepius, the god of medicine, right? And then you look at Asclepius, of course, we know everything Greek is Egyptian, right? I mean, we kind of know that, right? <laughs> right? So, so it all, it's all rooted in Egypt. So and then you go and you look up who's, who's Asclepius associated to in Egypt? Is uh, Imhotep, the god of medicine, known as a living man. And I'll just show you. This is from Robert Boval's book, actually. It's, uh, where is it here? It's called uh, Imhotep the African. Okay. This is Robert Boval's book. And it's not astrology. It's a book about Im who is Imhotep. Who is this architect of the cosmos? He's a living man. He was literally, he is a living man. In the Met, in the museum, the Metropolitan Museum in, in New York, he has the Book of the Dead handwritten by him. His Book of the Dead is is on display there. I saw it. But here we have Imhotep. He's the architect of the cosmos. He, he, his occupation has connected with astral rather than solar observation. So then down here, he was an architect of the cosmos and taught the motion of the stars and the constellations. So this is telling us that Imhotep was also studying sidereal astrology because he was studying astral rather than solar tropical is solar movements he was studying right astral so then you go i mean and you can you can look it up emotep asclepius they're the same the staff with the snake around it the serpent bearer is a fucus the two snakes around the staff right two snakes wrapped seven times that's the seven chakras kundalini energy so but if you look further i mean you go hold down on, and you can hold on there's yeah. no, that's not a coincidence that way they got rid of this one then, is it? No, it's not a coincidence. That's what I'm saying. And, and, and a fucus does, he's in the ecliptic. His foot is in the ecliptic. And, wow. and, and you can, you can see thir, thir, So here's something that is like, it's crazy. So we see this, right? This is what I, I show. So they, we've, I don't know how many of us saw this, but they relate the, the 12 disciples and Jesus to the Zodiac. So you have 12 signs and the sun is in the middle. So how many altogether? 13. Okay. Horus and Jesus are the same, right? Then you go here. Here's Ra in his solar boat with the sun above his head, right? Whereas we see a lot of times Jesus has the sun above his head. He has 12 disciples pulling the boat. Okay. Horus with the sun above his head has 12 disciples pulling the boat with the sun above his head. All right, so 13, 13 with the one anointed one, the Christos one in the middle, 13. And what is Ephucus? He's the knower of resurrection. He, he's the God of medicine, the art of resurrection, meaning that you can, the body is just a vessel. You can transcend and, and come back and have your memory. And here's something interesting that I discovered with one of the guys who's on this call now, he's actually working on the comedic calendar and tying it into the sidereal calendar. So we go back and forth a lot. I never saw this, of, this is from the Hall of Two Truths. This is when you pass and you go and you get to go with Isis and Osiris. This is Osiris's chamber. 
So I was looking above and I'll make this bigger if I can. I was looking and I'm like, wait a second. You have 12 snakes, six on each side, just like you see the Last Supper. And in the middle, who do we have? Is Horus above Is Osiris, like a portal, right? So, so and this is, and then the next important part, right, is where is Ophiuchus? Ophiuchus is in the galactic center. What's oh, in the galactic no. center? All the cosmology points to the galactic center, the Mayans, the 13th Baktun, right? When the sun was conjunct the galactic center on 2012, 13 Baktun, right? So it's all 13, 13, 13. Yes. And it has wow. to do with the serpent, the feathered serpent. Here we have feathers, Horus, and the serpent, the serpents, the Nagas. So, so, so now we have the serpent bearer of Fucus Imhotep, the one who can harness the energy of the serpent cosmic wisdom. Because the, you know, the, 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 so the Uraeus, that's crazy. right? crazy. That's crazy. The Uraeus is the snake. Cosmic yeah, absolutely. Wisdom. Anybody who's seen uh, Magical Egypt season two would know that. Yeah, but, uh... right. You know that, right? <laughs> so, so now we're looking at tapping into a Fucus energy, Asclepius, you know, Imhotep. Are you saying, like, this is what we're tapping in now? This is what we're tapping into? Well, if you accept Sidereal Astrology and you're looking at what I'm looking at, then you realize, holy cow, we have a lot of access to higher wisdom if we can understand cosmic alignment with the 13 zodiac signs. And here's, here's a kicker. So I'm looking deeper and deeper because I'm on a mission. 13, okay, so that point, and we, I don't know if we know Paul LaViolette's work. Yes. Uh, the, yeah, the Genesis of the Cosmos. This is his book here. Um, I think I have it somewhere here. Uh, Genesis of the Cosmos is his book. Uh, maybe it's not in this one. But anyway, he points that there's a pulsar there. And he points that the pulsar is actually a navigation system for stellar travel. And then when you look at the pulsar, what's in that, what's in that area? In 1994, we discovered, okay, here's the kicker. So in Mayan cosmology, all cosmology says our, our ancient teachers, Quetzalcoatl, um, Imhotep, or Fugus, they all come from this place, the galactic center where the 13th zodiac sign is. Then you look there, they say it's the, cross, the crossroad of the two worlds, right, in Mayan cosmology. Then you look there, and literally there's another galaxy crossing us at that point. It's the Sagittarius dwarf galaxy is merging with our galaxy for 3 million years. We just discovered in 1994, but the ancients are saying, this yeah. is where we're from. This is where yeah. the ancients are from. This is where the builders are from. This is where they come from. This is where Quetzalcoatl comes from. This is where, right? And this is the 13 zodiac sign. That's, that's actually new information for me. Like I know, I knew the galactic center was, the, the, you know a thing but i had uh, no idea that th there was a crossing of yeah ants. yeah i'm going to see if i have it in this presentation here it is right here this is the crossing right here so if you if you look you can see sagittarius dwarf galaxy here's our galaxy down here sagittarius dwarf galaxy is coming into our galaxy right here this big ring wow. right and over here you can see it over here in this area so there's literally a cross, a crossing of two worlds. And then is there a portal? If you look at Osiris's chamber, it looks like, is there yeah. a portal? We all consider that a stargate, right? Ancient astronaut theorists say <laughs> it's a portal. Yeah, okay, so, crazy. I mean, this is like, yeah. And look, you know, I, I have to just go on record and saying, I'm very skeptical about the ancient astronaut thing, only from the perspective mm -hmm. that it takes away our capacity for doing pretty amazing things right it's mm -hmm. like okay we could you know we're too stupid to do it so like I, i'm kind of i'm not close-minded to it but i maybe it's a gateway that you know like it's a very long story but you know where where we're receiving energies that al allow us to actually receive this kundalini energy which gives yeah. us cosmic consciousness and we can do anything at that point right but mm -hmm. that's um very cool mm -hmm. sweetie very, very yeah cool. that's what i'm subscribed to i'm subscribed to when you attune to the energy and the frequency, then then the information is clearer. Yes. And you know, you know, and then that's where that's why the Mayan, like, uh, well, basically all the shamans, they they take the uh, 
they take the DNT plant medicines and then they, 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 yes, they travel to these realms and then they, they bring back the information. The wisdom. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right. Let's go back and see Caitlin. Yeah. Caitlin is probably like, what, what do you mean? I'm <laughs> like, Hello. <laughs> it's my birthday yeah. for goodness sakes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She's like, yeah. So let's look at her chart real quick. Let's see. Let's make this bigger. So yeah, Caitlin. So here, so yeah, it's, it's in Libra. So you're, and it's, it's, it looks like it's conjunct uh, Pluto. Uh, yep. It's conjunct Pluto in your 10th house. But then you have that moon in the Fucus, that 13th zodiac sign that we talked about. So that's really, really oh. cool to have your moon in a moon, your moon in yeah. your Fucus. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah, that, it's, that's it's awesome. True. Yeah, because that that that's like so. What I'm what I'm picking up on that is like her 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 energy is like tapped into that field. Her her, her, her like she can she can really attune psychically to that. To that 13 zodiac that's probably why she's on this channel right now that's probably why we chose her, her, her yeah. chart because we're all attuned to this higher frequency and then we have this energy moving through us guiding us and making us you know share information the right way so yeah this is what it is capricorn rising ruled by saturn and we look at saturn interesting she has saturn and uranus conjunct so the planet of limitation <clears throat> pretty much they call that <clears throat> Slavery, <clears throat> the planet of like, you're in a body, the clock is ticking. Kronos, right? Egyptian Kronos. That's where, that's the god of time. That's Saturn. But then Uranus is freedom. So freedom and, and structure are together trying to become, trying to figure it out. <laughs> well, right? And then with that, go ahead. No, I was just going to keep going. Yep. No, no. And then with that moon and the fucus, that's like, that's moving and just being like, I feel the energy, but I know I have to be embodied. <clears throat> I know I have to be structured. I have to have a, a normal job or whatever. But then there's this like, but I'm free to explore the stars, you know, whatever. Right. So that's, <clears throat> that's where I'm seeing with her. Because that's then amazing. Neptune, well, yeah. sweetie, at this point here, because it's yeah. a kind of a very similar thing going on, right? Yeah. The conjunction yeah. The great, great conjunction, right, is Saturn, the planet mm -hmm. of limitation, and mm -hmm. and honestly, the whole set Saturn Cronus thing is yeah. is a huge topic, um, and yeah. you were talking about it in terms of it is the ruler of our domain, but you also yeah. have this Jupiter thing, right, mm -hmm. which is expansion and woo. Yeah. So so when you have those two planets. Tell mm -hmm. me about the conjunction there. What does that actually okay. mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So first, it's important to know that the, the whole story because everything <clears throat> is a building. So let's see if I have it. I, I should still have it up. Hang on a sec. Because that's what I was looking at earlier. Um, is this this one? No. Uh, anyway, so we can all know the sat, there was a Saturn Pluto conjunction that happened on January 21st. And what that what that is breaking down an old system and rebuild and, and then rebuilding a new one. But that takes time. Chrono says this takes time. Pluto is like, I'm gonna chop it up. Pluto is the 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 the, the Lord of Darkness. He's the eighth house. He rules Scorpio. So he's all about transmutation. <clears throat> and it's usually when those two are together, it's usually transmutation through sickness or pandemic. So changes through sickness or pandemics or a social structure. Right. And in this case, we, we had a, a pandemic and it, it really became reality exactly January, what was it? January 12th. It became like, oh, this is real. This coronavirus, whatever is real, right? So that's one part of the story. At the same time in April, Uranus was eking its way into Aries the change. <clears throat> so then by time January comes around, we have this conjunction of Saturn and Pluto breaking things down. Then getting ready for the great conjunction, bringing in while wow, Uranus is fully in Aries, four degrees Aries. So we all know like there's a thing, this is why this 33 degree Masons is because it takes three degrees for a sign, for a planet or the sun to be completely three degrees inside of a sign to fully embody the sign. So now we have Uranus in four degrees. 
right? And four degrees of Aries, which means we're ready, we're fully embodied in the Aries energy for change, right? And I heard through my friend who's on here now, uh, Ramutaf, who studies the Kemetic, the ancient mystery school Kemetic uh, cosmology. There's yeah. actually 34 degree Masons. And yes. that relates to the top of the pyramid is the 34th and the top of the pyramid is missing. Wow. So we're, we're four degrees. <clears throat> so we're four degrees into Aries with Uranus, the planet of change. So it shows us we're now ready for the change at this great conjunction. <clears throat> so great conjunction means great rulers. They say Jesus was born, the Christos was born when there was a great conjunction. They say that that was the star of Bethlehem. Right, so so we know that as leadership coming into, to to leadership coming into leadership, at a time of change, <laughs> radical change and renewal. After we just broke down an old system that needed to break down. Sounds like the job that Bill Gates is going for. Yeah, I think so. That's exactly the tech technological revolution. So how is it going to be? I don't know if we've ever seen that movie uh, Belle Vert. You ever see Belle Vert? No. Where it's you know. On their technological revolution, they decided to throw technology away. Okay, they reached yes. the pinnacle point, and then they threw it away. They were like, you know what? We're going to live in, in our, our pagan ways. But then they would, what was interesting with that movie, they would volunteer. They would volunteer. They had a, they had a planetary council, and they would volunteer. Who's going to go to this planet and help them learn these things? And then they say, who wants to go to Earth? And nobody wants to go. So anyway, long story short, so she finally goes because she has family there and she walks into Notre Dame or one of these cathedrals and she sees Jesus there and she goes, oh, he's one of our own. We sent him here 2000 years ago. And then, and then she asked, she asked a little boy, who, do you know who this guy is? Oh yeah. He was like the son of God and now he died, but we celebrate him. Um, you know, it's called Christmas and look what I got on his birthday. And he pulls out a toy gun and she's like, we sent our best to earth to teach them the spiritual ways and they celebrate him with a pistol. <laughs> so this That's is, earth. That's why nobody <laughs> wanted to go, honey. Yeah. Wow. So the Christos is, is born on this time. And that's where we, wow. that's where we say follow the, you know, the star. It was a bright star. Yeah. So yeah, we're coming into leadership. And I okay, think. Now do we mean physical birth? Do we mean that there's actually going to be a baby or can it be, you know, somebody does a complete turnaround, right? Like uh, somebody who you thought was really, really bad rebirths mm -hmm. and becomes really, really good kind of thing. Yeah. Or is it a physical birth or is it, or is it technocracy takes over? Like, mm -hmm. do, does it, does it describe the kind of birth or it's open to interpretation? I think it's open to interpretation, but I, I think that it is, it's, it's interesting because I was showing this to you earlier. It's, it's leadership. So yeah. I think it might be born into a great leader. And can you be a great leader? Like, like that's the question. Can you lead? Or is, are you hungry for power and you want to lead through that way? And one of the things, this is what, I don't know, whoever got a sneak peek saw this. These are all the presidents who were elected around the Great Conjunction. Right? You can see right here. Let me move that down. So all of them, pretty much all of them died in office. <laughs> and then even the ones that didn't die in office, there was an attempt on their lives. So you could right? put Jesus on this list. You could put Jesus on the list. You could put Krishna on the list. You could put everybody on the list. Yeah, you could put all of the great, the great ones on this list. Who, who? <laughs> so, so now we're looking at that, like, you know, What's up? so I don't know these are now these, these this is where we get questions now like what's gonna happen who's is it gonna who's gonna die what but I do know I have a chart up that the, the there's an eclipse on the 14th there's a solar eclipse on December 14th leading up to the great conjunction and it's in Ophiuchus <laughs> 13 <gasps> zodiac sign and and Donald Trump was born on a lunar eclipse. So meaning his, his moon was eclipsed in a fucus. So what, what could that mean? I mean, this is like, I mean, I don't know. I don't want to get political. I'm not into politics, uh, or especially sharing it like on a broad spectrum here. But 
you know, what could that mean? I, you know, I don't know. Like, is this a great rebirth? This is going to be death. I, you know, the, 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 this is what we're looking at. It could at. go we're either at, way. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. like, it's, it's, I, I, I guess with all astrology and mm -hmm. the, it means that the, weather is very good for sailing the sun's out yeah. the seas are calm and the winds are blowing and it's up to you whether you go sailing or not right it's yeah. like yeah, i'm a cat i'm a sailing captain so yeah that's, <laughs> i always look at life as sailing yeah, yeah. <laughs> so trim. you know if you don't go sailing if you lock yourself in the house you're not going to have a good sail that day right so uh, yeah it's like conditions I are good yeah, I think yeah. that's what it, I think it's a, I think it's a, let's call it like a celestial sailing regatta. Yeah. The stars are aligned for someone to take the throne, to bring the world, literally the world. I don't, I mean, I don't want to scare say new world order, but yeah. lead, lead, lead by example, the world yeah. into an, a realm of advanced technology. And then get assassinated. Now, <laughs> right. So now. I mean, we, right, that's what we're talking about, though, right? Is it the same person? We, this is what I don't know. I mean, yeah. I was looking at this with a few of my friends, and we were I was seeing feminine leadership, believe oh, it or not. Okay. You know, so then we can I'm have, ready. Yeah, I, I, it's needed, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. we saw this, and it was like, whoa, really? And we saw, like, the Sekhmet energy, and we were, you know, one of my friends, she's on here now, Ramutef was feeling, was feeling like, like um volcanoes and we know there are some pyramids built on the 19 degree line of the volcano fault line <laughs> so so you know it can go at this point based on 2020 it can go anyway we could just i don't know but yeah. but we are heading for great change now the like with anything like the great sailing regatta who's gonna win the good the good honest sailor or, or the, the sailor, sailor that cheats Right, the sailor that that dupes and cheats and, and figures out a way to to like go around the curve. I don't know, like right. So we look at you know technology, what we can do, and then we look at what we're all scared about. And who, you know, right now it's, it's 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 we don't know, but we all scared. We're we're here in the Bill Gates thing and the control with the vaccine. Well, this is my question technology. for you, sweetie. So. Mm -hmm. So we've got Saturn doing its Saturn thing, right? Which, yeah. Again, which is kind of it's 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 Earth, it's it's earthly, it's restriction, it's kind mm -hmm. of uh, rigid. Um, mm -hmm. For instance, anybody <laughs> that has been through uh, a Saturn return knows very well what Saturn is, right? <laughs> and, and all you youngins, yeah. get ready because it's fun. Let me tell you. <laughs> so Saturn return, it kind of when it, when it happens to you as a person, it's like all the shit in your life that doesn't serve you gets removed, either gracefully yes. or not, depending on your ability to understand what the hell's exactly. going on, right? And exactly, so if you yep. don't know. It's going to be fun, right? So yeah, that's yeah. kind of, we've got a Saturn thing, that kind of vibe going on here. So now you've mm -hmm. got Jupiter, which is like, everything's bigger and everything's better, right? But mm -hmm. it can amplify, or can it? This is my question. Yeah. Can it amplify bad vibes as well as good vibes? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because if you look on, you know, if you study deep into universal law, there's really no good or bad. It's just a positive charge, negative charge to create, to create an awakening or a whole, right? To create the whole, you need negative, you need, you need darkness to see light or right, vice versa, right? And it's just a matter, yeah, so now Jupiter just knows, it just expands, it has an expansive energy. And it's also the protector of planets, it absorbs it's funny, I just heard this too. Like, so I know that it, it absorbs meteor strikes and asteroid strikes because it's it's a large, it's right above me. That's Jupiter right there. So it's so big, its gravitational pull is pulling in all of the, the strikes. It's Except absorbing. Except now it's actually spitting things at us. It's spit, yeah, that's what, yeah, exactly. <laughs> now it's spitting it's like, things. So Earth, you figure. are so bad. Yeah. <laughs> Go figure. It's spinning. It's flinging. It's like, forget. I'm flinging shit out now. Yeah. <laughs> so now we got that. Now it's like, really? Jupiter's now flinging the, the asteroids? <laughs> 
<laughs> Holy shit. So, yeah. Oh, but exactly. normally, normally it's a protector. It, okay. It's a protector. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. the king. It's the king of planets. It's right. So these are two kings. I call it what, when I was doing the chart early, I call these the three magis because Saturn, Jupiter, and Pluto, they're the teachers. They're the, they're the teaching through cosmic conscious awareness, right? They're, they're the ones that teach like Pluto teaches, you know, death and rebirth, painful death, beautiful rebirth. Jupiter teaches, you know, rulership, kingship, you know, protect, uh, you know, uh, you know, bet, it's a benefit, right? And Saturn is, you know, that's the cube, that's the cube of, of, of Mecca, right? They go around the cube seven times counterclockwise. Counterclockwise is, is clockwise is harmony. Counterclockwise is not. It's karmic. Yes, yes. So, you know, you got Saturn doing that thing, saying you're here to work this out on Earth. These things are going on on Earth. I'm keeping the time. You do what you want. I'm keeping the time. And Jupiter is expanding it. And Pluto just destroyed pretty much everything. I mean, we literally have a destroyed economy, which some of us see as an opportunity to create new. Some of us are attached. This is the polar. This is the age of Pisces. These are the polar opposites. opposites if you look at yeah. Pisces, yeah it's 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 a two two souls right half circles are considered souls in symbology they're trying to go in different directions but the the matter of earth the string between pisces is holding them together so they have to they have to work together if they want to get somewhere <laughs> and that's the age we're in that's that's where we're, that's where we're in oh it doesn't yeah. bode well does it sweetheart yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ooh, yeah okay all right yeah. okay so we've got now uh -huh. is all this happening in okay is this conjunction mm -hmm. okay so the tropical people are saying the conjunction's happening in aquarius okay yeah so where are you saying this is happening in it's happening right right on the cusp right here you can see it's okay. between uh sagittarius and capricorn okay so it, so again the Aries mm -hmm. vibe is go, 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 me, 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 do, 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 ah, yeah. right? And now yeah. you've got a cusp of Sagittarius. And so that's more grounded for a start, right? You've got, uh -huh. well, you've got your fire and your earth. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're both working. Uh, Sagittarius is higher wisdom. It's the, it's the archer, right? That shoots. And if you, I forgot to show you that slide, but Sagittarius, the arrow of Sagittarius, guess where it points to? It points to the pulsar in the galactic center, <laughs> right? So, so when you understand cosmology, you know, and you're not doing astrology through a book from like Barnes and Noble, like Astrology yeah. 101, and you're yeah. looking at astrology from ancient cosmology and what they were trying to tell us, you see that the arrow of Sagittarius is pointing to the galactic center, higher wisdom, cosmic consciousness. So this is going on in Sagittarius, going into Capricorn, which is Capricorn is responsibility, Earth. It's it's the, it's responsible Earth Saturnian realm energy. So are we going and shooting to the high cosmic consciousness energy and bringing it back down to Earth so that we can have a great awakening? So if you're looking at it this way, it reads right. So people are saying, you know, it's going to happen in Aquarius, and that sounds nice. But guess what? the ruler of Aquarius is Uranus, yeah. right? So that's yeah. why we can kind of relate to the Aquarius energy because the ruler of Aquarius is in Aries. So the ruler yeah. of Aquarius is awakening right now. It's in the new sign. It's like, I'm going, 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 changing. Wow. So this is what, this is why these little things that we spoke about, 432 versus 440, you can nod your head to, to Aquarius. But then you can look deeper and deeper and deeper when you do sidereal and you see the rule of Aquarius is in Aries. So it's not Aquarius. We're looking at Uranus and Aries and we're looking at Sagittarius of high wisdom and, and divine cosmic consciousness. Okay, so Uranus is one planet I'm not big on. What is Uranus's bag, baby? Okay, yeah, it's a great question. Yeah, It's funny because I, when I was pouring myself water, I was thinking I need to... Make sure I explain Uranus. And then I told you, just brought it up. So Uranus is the only, okay. So all of our planets in the solar system, right? It's tilted, what, 23 degrees or whatever. We have a normal tilt, right? Uranus is, the North Pole of Uranus is 90 degrees to our sun. 
Wow. So you have Uranus here and the pole is on the top. So if this was Earth, right? Let's say, I'm just gonna do, this is the sun, I'll just put it there. But let's say we have Earth, you know, you have a little tilt like that, right? Uranus's North Pole is exactly 90 degrees pointing towards our sun. So it's an eclectic planet. It has its own, it makes up its own rules. Nobody can explain how can this planet's North Pole point directly to the sun where, like this, spinning like this, <laughs> when all the other planets are, are, are going like Like this. that, yeah. And not only yeah. that, it has seven magnetic fields. Right, I think it's six, I think it's seven, which is the planet of Saturn, right? Seven, wow. and it has seven magnetic fields, which is crazy because it's it's moving, and and no one can. It's just like Uranus is its own thing because all the other planets, if you look at their magnetic field, it's nice even lines, right? It's like a nice even Taurus field. Uranus has like seven crazy ones, <laughs> so Uranus literally is the planet of wild. Kind. I can do whatever I want. Yeah. I'm eclectic. I'm creativity. I can yeah. prove all of your structure wrong i can prove all your science wrong and if you align with new ideas then you're awakened because i'm showing you something that you thought wasn't possible i'm pointing 90 degrees and i have seven magnetic field magnetic you know meeting points <laughs> so that's yeah. uranus so he's like the quantum planet anything's possible yeah 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 exactly yeah wow yeah exactly right Amazing. anything is possible lightning fast change yeah wow and if you look at uranus it looks like if you look at it it looks like hanuman you know the the right it looks like hanuman yeah, yeah. the hindu yeah. god hanuman the elephant yeah they remove obstacles but also they say that he creates the obstacle obstacles so that they can be moved through creativity <laughs> So you like like a Ganesha kind of Ganesha, thing. Is yeah. that what you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, I said Hanuman. Yeah, I meant Ganesha. Ganesha. Right, right. Ganesha. This wow. is like a Ganesha. Yeah. That's crazy, yeah. honey. That's yeah. crazy. Okay, so we've got <laughs> this. Just to boil it down again, we've got yeah. Saturn constriction. We've got Jupiter, the magnifier, mm -hmm. in Sagittarius, which is mm -hmm. philosophical wisdom. Mm -hmm. heading into we could apply this wisdom on earth yeah which would be beautiful mm -hmm. so this actually does sound i have to say to mm -hmm. me what the better than the tropical version right so yeah. what's the downside here what's the risk what's the risk well i mean there's a square at that time to uranus the planet of change you see right okay. so that that and then you know mars is squaring all of this going on here. This is this is the this is the uh, eclipse. So we have like issues on the eclipse of like tension, right? But then let's have a look. Let's no shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly right. Uh, let me go back to this chart here. Let me uh, do this. One sec. Okay, get my mouse back. So let's go back to the solstice. So so now let's look at this. We have. It's still square, right? So you still have that square with Uranus. So this means, you know, the awakening, you know, it's going on, but it's actually challenging the new leadership. Like the, so there's friction going on with the new leadership. And not only that, you have, I was looking at this earlier, you have its, you have moon conjunct Jupiter, uh, Neptune, sorry. And it's squaring on the nodes here. There's a T-square. So this means like the visions of the future, also of the past. The past, the north, the south node is the past. It's actually in Ophiuchus, cosmic consciousness. So it's saying, remember your past. Can you, how far in your past can you remember? How far? And Venus is in Scorpio. Wow. That's, that's the Sekhmet Kali, goddess, mother, yeah. feminine, cool. goddess, creator. So. So yeah. if, if the south is in Euphucius, I can't even say it properly. Uh, Fucus, where's, where's the north node, sweetie? It's in Taurus, searching for a stability. Okay. So this is where it makes sense, right? So so hitting hitting the moon and Neptune. In in Aquarius, uh, Neptune is in Aquarius, moon is in Pisces. The age of our times and the age that, you know, we think that all this is going on in Aquarius. 
the moon is feeling that and it's hitting. So it's what, what I'm seeing is because the sun is also conjunct and it's, it's conjunct Mercury in, in Sagittarius as well, but it's also on the cusp of the galactic center as well. You see, that's the cusp. So it's just getting out of the galactic. So the sun just passed the galactic center and it's out, it's coming out. So it's, it's, it's charged because even NASA proves, right? NASA says the galactic center is a highly charged electromagnetic uh, frequency because it it's the core of the galaxy. It has a charge of 30 billion suns. So our sun has just passing through that, the eclipse happens, solar eclipse. So it gets a little knocked around. Then it goes in, it gets charged up in that galactic center. Then it comes out into Sag, conjuncts Mercury. Mercury is the messenger of the gods, delivers the messages, information. And I forgot if Mercury was hitting. Yeah, it's trying on Uranus. So the so Mercury and Uranus has a trine right here. When Mercury and Uranus hit, that that is broadcasting. That's using technology to get the message out. Yeah, yeah. So information will come out, right? So so we see, we're seeing that a highly charged sun, and then the south node is saying, remember your past cosmic consciousness. Remember who you are. Remember, you know, the cycles of life. Remember all of this stuff. For what? So you can go on your path. North yeah. node path. What is that? Taurus, stability. Yeah. You know, strong, rooted in stability. Yeah. Strong as a bull, but knows its roots. And kind of also, like, it's pleasurable. Yeah. Taurus is like... Yeah. It's not like we're all going to be on the road, right? I mean, right. Taurus is people eat, people sleep, people enjoy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, am I right? Yeah, I'm it's gonna, the earth. Okay. It's earth. It's earth. Okay. It's like this is our earth. This is yeah. like we we don't need we don't need to to do we need to struggle for what we struggle for to yeah. feed ourselves. Yeah. Right. This is right. the so and what this is, is what it's, it's for for good. Yeah, sakes, it's yeah. hitting Neptune. So what I'm seeing here, it's hitting Neptune in Aquarius. Aquarius is dawning on the age. Neptune is the visions and the dreams. So now you have visions, dreams, and you have the moon in Pisces. So now what this is telling me is we have the visions and the dreams of the future. And we have the visions and we have the knowledge of the past. And the T-squared, which means great lessons and challenges. So if you pass the challenge, you'll get the lesson. So okay. will we pass the challenge? That's that's the question. Well, this is my next question for you. Today mm -hmm. I posted this funny meme mm -hmm. and I posted it because of what we're doing today. And it's like this little puppet and it says, now that the election's over, we can all get back to normal. And the puppet's like, says oh, the yeah. astrologer, right? Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yes, when I does, saw that. Yeah. Yeah. So when does it all sit? Like, how long is all of this drama going to go on for us, sweetie? How long well, until we get to be happy and Taurus together in the yeah, age of Aquarius? I mean, that's a good question. I mean, to be honest with you, I haven't looked into you know, the future I'm, so I'm, much. I'm not immune to all this crap. <laughs> so, so I'm looking at it like, holy shit. Yeah. Right. So I'm kind of like, let's just follow it through and let's see what happens after because we don't know. But I mean, I mean, have you looked at 21? A little bit. Okay. It, it does look If I were you, dude, looked... I'd be like looking up every day on 21 just to see what's coming down the pike. I mean, because, you know, know, like 2020, know. who yeah. would have guessed, right? Yeah. Who would have mm -hmm. guessed? Okay. So that's your homework. I will, we'll meet yeah. back up in a week. We're going to yeah, do this again. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm so, I'm so like, oh my God, what the hell? But yeah, 2021. I mean, it looks... We're definitely up for a change. Like, what choice are we going to make? Because here's the deal. You know, we go through these cycles. It's just like decision time. And if not, you know, prophecy rock, right? The Hopis. You know that that rock, right? Totally. There's two lines of the rock. Yeah. One of them is the jaggedy one that looks like you. That looks like Aquarius. Yeah. That yep, jaggedy yep. line is the line of Aquarius, and it's the two-hearted path. And they show the head is disconnected from the body. So it says if you choose that path with technology and you disconnect your brain from your heart, that path has an ending. There's an ending there. And we're dawning on that ending. If you choose the other path, which shows the straight line, and it has those little orbs that, that signify the world ages, 
that line goes all the way around infinite around the rock. And they show that the heads are connected to the bodies, meaning your head is connected to your heart. Your brain and heart have a connection. If you choose that path at this pivotal point, you'll have, an, you'll have infinity. You'll have a harvest. So corn and food and all that. If you don't, it'll end. You know? Well, so and this not is where, end well, right? Obviously. No, no. It won't. No, exactly. It won't. It won't end well. And that's that ending. I don't really know what that could be. You know what? I mean, you know, I don't know. This is where this is where now we can speculate. What is the ending? What is the beginning? What are we dawning on? What what's possible? Or are we getting pushed okay. down so hard so we can bounce back up? I'm going to use some of my, my psychic powers now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That 1 900 psychic hotline. Let's go. <laughs> All right. I have just, I'm going to launch a poll, guys. Uh -huh. And it's anonymous. So, no, we're not going to, we're not going to uh, see what you, who you are and what you answered, but it's probably the most important question that pertains to this. And I've written the word iPhone, but are you guys willing to give up your technology, your iPhone? Answer yes or no right here, because I think that's kind of going to be a little bit indicative. Oh, look, okay. Ooh, 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 ooh. I, I gave up the iPhone for what? For for the new in the new. Well, movie, like the thing is, I think age? the iPhone tech, like the iPhone, is like the poster boy for the technology that's keeping us enslaved, right? And it's only going to get worse because it's going to have the health passport on it. Blah 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 blah. But when we say, uh if you get it off the iPhone, you give up, you know, the tracking, the COVID tracking, and, you know, yeah. they don't know where you are and all of this. kind. Of, it's like right now to give up your phone gives you so much more freedom, right? Yeah. But yeah. who's willing to do it is the who's question. Do it? Well, who's I'll tell you a quick story. You remember when COVID hit in China and then it ended, there was this question of, this, I forget how many, 22 million phones or 2 million phones? 2 million phones or whatever million phones got disconnected. Everybody, they gave up 2 million or 22 million phone numbers, just got disconnected. So there was a, a speculation that all those people died and they weren't reporting it. But then we realized, no, they gave up their phones. That's what happened. Yep. And then I can even attest to this personally, because I have a teenage daughter, 17, addicted to the phone, to the point where all the summer, you know, I have a sailboat and we go away for the weekends and I'm like, honey, let's go away. Like, no, I'm scared that the, my battery won't be able to charge on the phone and the boat. I don't want to go. I was like, it's 95 degrees three days in a row. Let's get out of here. No, I'm going to stay here. Yeah, it's it's that crazy. Yeah. So well, I'm, I'm going to say we have a bunch of liars here because we have 67% uh, say yes, they're going to give up their phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sixty-seven percent. Really? Yeah. I don't know if we can do it. I hope you're right, guys. I really do. Our lives might depend on it. That's all I'm saying. I don't Let's know. Let's give them a mailing address and see if they send it in. Oh <laughs> Lord! Well, I hope so. I hope yeah. so. Okay. I miss oh. my old Nokia phone. I had an old Nokia. You dial the number. Yeah. Oh my gosh! I'm so old. I had the phone with the handbag. Oh my God! I remember that. <laughs> yeah. You got that antenna? <laughs> yeah. It's like it was like literally a, that big. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So now we have a few questions, Daryl. And Ginger wants to know how old is this system in general, right? How okay. old is the system? Well, the system is actually all as since it's it's how the ancients practice astrology. The system is as old as as, as 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 ancient because if you think about it, right, the ancient astrologer astronomers, it was one practice. Astrologers, you couldn't become a physician without being an astrologer. So that was one practice. And what did they do is they looked at the sky with their telescopes and they, they mirrored, they looked at their charts and they were replicating and mirroring the sky and their charts. So it was done in sidereal time, which is then where we have the whole th discovery of precession which w it's up for debate who discovered because we think the Greeks did. And then the feminine, uh, what's her name? Hypatia, we say she did. But yeah, but Ptolemy, honey, I think honestly, it could even be prehistory, right? It's like, prehistory. Yeah, I think that like p humans have been looking at this stuff and then they just started writing it down at some point. And that's why we're like, is it the Egyptians, the Greeks, the Romans? Exactly, right? yeah. Well, here's what yeah. I've come up with. If you want to go deeper, 
uh, I have it on, it's Paul La Violette. It's cosmic, it's Genesis of the Cosmos and uh, decoding the messages of the pulsars. And, you know, the way I study is I, I, I kind of know the stuff and then I'm reading this book and he's saying the same thing. So what, I, what I've come up with and what he's also confirmed through science is that, okay, the zodiac belt does not look like the zodiac signs that we say. So Lib, Lib, like Taurus doesn't look like Taurus, like Sagittarius is not really an archer. It looks like a teapot, right? So they don't represent these animal symbols. So a lot of times we're told, oh yeah, how did you come up with the Zodiac? Oh, the, the ancients were bored and they just like looked around. No, what Paul Avialet says and what I also have felt and now he confirmed is that it's a mapping system of the processional cycle of earth. So your planet, our planet goes through cycles and in those chunks of space are energetic frequencies that cause, that cause our sun and earth to go through certain changes. And these changes are archetypal changes. So this is what we're looking at, at this clock, at the zodiac belt. And what we're trying to do is like you said, macro and micro, we're trying to see what the cosmos is going through, the yugas, right, the ages. And then we can, we're embodying that through reading that through a zodiac, through a zodiac horoscope reading. Right, so that's that's how old it is. So basically, it's an ancient language that I believe that many civilizations beyond our solar system yeah, yeah. have their own zodiac yeah, cycle yeah. based on their star system, based yeah. on the energetic energetic frequencies of different parts of the sky, based on their solar system evolution. Sure. They have their own zodiac belt. So we can go somewhere else. Let's say. If, Sirius, for example, our binary star, which is what um, what's it? Walter Cruton then says, right? Yeah, the one who the Great Year. We can go there, and it could. We're running under the same zodiac belt because we're a binary, but they can be the total. They can read it total opposite. They might be going in the opposite direction because, right? Exactly. So they might be going backwards considered to uh, compared to us. But they're working with the same data at least, which is yeah, great. Mm -hmm. All That's, right. Yeah. So now Javer wants to know, have you experienced any culture's version of a Stargate ritual? Any cultures that have a Stargate ritual? Well, have you, like, I'm, I'm assuming that what he's saying is that cultures have rituals that are Stargate rituals. Mm -hmm. And I'm, this is, I, he, he's very esoteric and knows a lot of things that I don't know. Yeah. So I'm just trying to translate it but if that exists have you ever experienced a version of one of those stargate rituals oh have i experienced uh, yeah. myself a stargate yeah. ritual the closest that i've experienced with a stargate ritual is is doing the ayahuasca okay and yeah. literally being literally being you know Tell, so basically, I, I forget what chamber that is, but it was a sunk. It, it was an Egyptian chamber. Like I was on, I was in ceremony, and then all of a sudden, it became an Egyptian ceremonial site. And then I went in, and then I was trans. I was shot out to Orion, <laughs> and I was oh, like, wow. so. I mean that that's my experience, and you know, and then when you see things like when I showed you uh, I, uh, Osiris's temple. And you see above him is Horus. It looks like a portal in the 12 Nagas. You know, is this what they're showing us? And I remember seeing something with William Henry. I don't know, a lot of people might know William Henry. He talks a lot about, he showed Jesus Christ coming out of the galactic center. And it looks like a portal. It looks like the movie Stargate. It looks like watery in the back. And he's coming out the galactic center and he's holding a sickle in his hand. And it, it's the sickle of Saturn. So Saturn. what I read that as, yeah, is like, I am the anointed one. You know, I am the Christos. And I'm also holding Saturn. Saturn is not cutting me. I'm actually holding the sickle. So I'm, I'm embodied in the Saturnian realm, but I'm also have access to this portal. That's Was what I saw that In as. the world and not of the world. Yeah, right. That, that's exactly right. That's mm -hmm. what I took from it. So if we look we see these things but you know are we taught these things are we taught oh yeah this stargate you know yeah yeah you know whatever like no we're not taught that but we we heard about that rock in peru i think it's that it's that rock and you put your head in and then you get trans you get transported into another realm 
So I haven't I mean, heard about that one. I'm gonna have to look that up, darling. I forgot the name of it. Oh my god. If somebody can chime in, I'm so yeah. some, um, I'm here. gonna oh. just do this, guys. Uh, uh I, I'm I actually have to go in a little while because I have another one coming up, but okay. What I want to do is post the group page that, oh, I lost it. The group page. We There's a Facebook group, right, sweetie? We can put on. Let me just see if I can get it. Your Facebook page. Oh, my group, my group or, your, or my group? Yes, Siberia Revolution. For the, well, do, do you make a group for this or is this just your normal group? Which one should I give everybody so they can find you? Oh, go to a Sidereal Revolution. On Facebook. Okay. Now, yeah. also, you have a class at Udemy right now, right? Where people can yeah. come and mm -hmm. learn all this great stuff. All right. Yeah. So what yeah. I might do is just because this is a train wreck for me right now, trying to find them, I'm going to send everybody an email with your group, with your classes, yeah. mm -hmm. um, so that they can find you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that way you, they can learn more because this is incredibly interesting so now oh, anonymous yeah. wants to know uh -huh. oh okay all right so he, so jafer was saying he has um and but his was more intentional it was egyptian and greek style uh and certain times of the years the stars have cycles for him okay so okay. remutev there is a lot of portals what your what's your take on the term for new year for New Year, this New Year, or the Kem the Kemet New Year? Oh, sweetie, Kemet New Year or normal New Year? Put it in the chat, darling. Who's that, Ramutaf? Yeah, that's yes. my star brother. That's who I work with on the yeah. on the uh, Kemet and the Kemetic. Um, so, do you think calendar. you know what? So, is Ramutaf a boy or a girl? It's it's a boy. A boy. So, does yeah. do you think you know what Ramutaf means, darling? When he's asking that question, is that like? He's um, setting you up for something that you already know. <laughs> yeah, I think. Brilliant. He, the, what was the question again? Because I'm looking at the okay, chat. There is a lot of portal. What? See, there's a few mi words missing. What's your take on the term New Year's? Oh, New Year's on the portal. Oh, I don't know. Wow, that's a that's a deep question. The New Year uh, through the portals. Um. I don't know. I think maybe like like re revisiting or 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 receiving like you know we uh, receiving messages from the portal. You know, are we allowed to go back and forth with the portal to the portal? I mean, that's what ideally we're looking at. So, is that what the New Year's are? Right? Because the the the, the comedic New Year and the Mayan New Year are the same. July twenty sixth. So really? yeah, and it, and it aligns with their pyramids. So. You know, for 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 um for the Mayan, it's 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 a it's a zenith alignment. So that they say that's a portal. So and and I, let me see if I can, if I can find it real quick. I'll share it. Let's see. Yeah, it is right here. This is the Mayan. Oh, the he's Mayan saying shaman. star versus dated New Year's. Star versus dated New Year. I don't know, I'm kind of lost at that. All right, we're going to have star, to... A star new year? A star, well, the star new year is what we just said, like with... The July thing, yes. The July 26th thing, yeah. And and that's what I was showing. You have this Mayan shaman. He's doing his uh, mushroom ceremony. He's a king. And he's in the galactic center. He's on the throne. In Sweetie, the make your center. screen big so we can see oh. it. Yeah, let me stop sharing. I think I'm still sharing. That's you are, I'm sweetie. That's why I'm like, ah, I can hardly see you. There we yeah, go. yeah, okay, there we go. <laughs> okay. Yeah, here it is. Right here. So this is, this is, um, wow. This is it. So he's sitting in the galactic, it's really the galactic, we see the Milky Way like that. But this is what they call the Great Rift. This is the crossroads of the two worlds. And he's on the throne and he's in the shaman. And he, he does this, he does this meditation or this journey to go into the other world and bring back messages for the people. So, and that's done around the new year. So I think that's what Ramutaf is that, relating to. I think that's to. the Seb, is it the Heb, Heb said festival? Uh, that sounds familiar. He would know. He, yes. Yeah, listen, John, yeah. I'm thinking it's the Heb Teb, he, uh, Heb mm -hmm. Seb. Uh, mm -hmm. Fantastic. Oh, hold on. Yeah. Got one more question, I think. Oh, mm -hmm. love you, bro. Fantastic. <laughs> yes, you got it, darling. So Ramatev, yeah. is that the Heb Seb ritual when he goes into the land and then comes back? Uh, because I've been looking at that myself for 
season three because it's very interesting. All right, my loves. Well, I okay, great transformation. I'm gonna get that one. I see somebody asked for that. Yeah. So. And does so, Heb uh, mean heaven then? Heb, I'm sorry, Remitav. Sorry, Remitav said Seb means earth. So if it's the Heb said, does it mean heaven, earth? I don't know. We'll find out. Mm, All yeah. right. Well, this was fantastic, sweetie. Yeah, this was great. Yeah. I'm, and I'm just like, everybody. Whoa. Yeah, we got the class. I have a master class coming up too. If you know, that's on starting on Tuesday, where it's like one, of, it's, it's with me in a group and getting we go really deep it's a part class so so sweetie we, send me that i'm going to send yeah. this to everybody yeah so that um you guys can uh you guys can learn all about it and honestly sweetie <laughs> i would do it yeah. to it right now i'm editing season three so my mind's like ah oh, but i'm yeah. going to do that because i really want to get my head around this it seems like it's crucial it's like no crucial yeah information well you you got the you got the beginners class i saw you 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 got it on yes. udemy so I yeah, did. and and yeah, if they want to just get beginners, go. Udemy's having sales like all the time. It's it's a little annoying for me because because then they make my class like twelve dollars, and I'm like, wait a second. But get it, you know. And then if you want to learn more, I'm available. Yeah, that's fabulous, yeah. sweetie. Well, thank yeah. you so much. Thank you, thank yeah, you guys, so for showing thank up too. Me, yeah. Yeah, thanks for happy birthday, Caitlin. Right? Was it Kate? Happy Caitlin? birthday, Caitlin. And I got a feeling yeah, we're gonna yeah. see some more of Ike. I've just got a feeling. <laughs> you I will be feel like. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll come on. Yeah, I'll be the uh, yeah, I'll be the uh, court astrologer for for our crew over here. <laughs> because I love you know? it. Yeah. yeah. All right, Dylan. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. All right, sweetie. And uh, all right, blessings, get the video everyone. out so that you can see it again. Sorry, I didn't interrupt you. You say bye bye now, sweetie. No, 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 I said blessings, you know, from the stars, love from the stars, and that's it. So we Fantastic. got. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dallin. Bye, everybody. Yeah, sweet. All right, bye.